Hello friends, just a reminder these videos are just for students who do better when they hear information versus just seeing it. So again, if you don't need the audio recording, you don't have to watch these videos. Just look at the slides yourself. I made them in a way that it very much mimics the classroom environment and the things that I would tell you or show you in the classroom. Okay, so today for drawing lesson four, the language of lines. Every child I meet feels comfortable drawing. When children are very young, they scribble for the sheer delight of creating. As they get older, their mark making can be harnessed into consistent patterns. Many children draw a tree, for example, as an oval resting on a long rectangular trunk, or a car as a box resting on several circles, much like what you see here. It's like we have a universal language automatically in drawing. With the command of a few simple line directions, vertical, horizontal, diagonal, arcs, they learn to write. These marks become letters of the alphabet, then words, and finally full sentences. Using these marks, they can leave a note on a table, and a person who comes in later will understand exactly what they mean. The magic of communication is born. The controlled use of diagonal, vertical, horizontal, and arcs are applied with infinite variation to create anything we can imagine, from the letters C and D to a boat on the ocean and beyond. Vertical, horizontal, diagonal, and arc lines form the foundation for other more complex shapes. As it turns out, the same skills used to gain command of writing are also the building blocks of drawing, a mastery of fine motor skills, a sense of proportion, and a desire for communication. Children begin to write by mastering several simple angle directions, which in turn make, for speakers of the English language, 26 letters. These letters make conservatively a quarter of a million words in English alone, which in turn can fashion an infinite number of sentences. Historically, many great drawing teachers start with these simple line directions, which can be reconfigured to form shapes and those in turn form images. While the most sophisticated drawings go way beyond this principle, they all have to start somewhere. As an artist, you must vary embellish and punctuate your lines much like a writer who uses adjectives and punctuation. To create meaningful drawings, you must learn when and how to de-emphasize some information, when to exaggerate, and how to weave individual elements into a unified, meaningful whole. For better or worse, when looking at an object or a group of objects, the human mind starts by first identifying the obvious. So how does the artist identify which line is most important? What lines best capture the character of a particular object and enable them to be woven into relationships? Start with a line that captures the majority of the action. You can determine which lines are most important by asking yourself, if I only had one line, where should it be placed to reflect the movement or action of the piece? This line is often called the line of action. It is helpful to think of this first mark as a sentence or two that summarizes a whole book. The line of action establishes the theme of the work because the simplest angles and arcs often account for the majority of the action, beginning with the dominant line direction, can create the clarity of a single voice, and in so doing will unify the piece. The mark does not have to be perfectly placed, just a best guess. As you add additional lines that repeat this original angle and echo this first sentiment, the drawing becomes reinforced, strengthened, and cohesive. The additional lines add emphasis, focus, and rhythm. The gesture line or line of action seen on the left side of the page manages to capture the movement inherent in the finished piece. Okay, so over on the left, you can see the action line and that's what kind of guides the rest of the piece. Give careful consideration to your first few marks. The rest of your drawing hangs on this structure. Yet repetition alone runs the risk of monotony. 
Therefore, once you establish the main theme and build upon it, you must introduce countering angles or arcs, building the drawing up one line at a time. A crossing line often dramatically extends the range of expression. Introducing this new angle direction further describes the subject without diminishing the power of line of action. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you some examples. A master sketch is always unified at every stage. Harmony in a drawing requires the interplay of both sameness and difference. Repeated themes with opposing variation account for the liveliness of a work. Often beginners make the mistake of working a single part so intently that they forget the rest of the piece. For example, they might place the head and chest of a figure while forgetting the hands and feet creating a coherent gesture and block, or sorry, a co coherent gesture and block in offsets this tendency. Working with the large movements of straights and curves ensures from the beginning that no part ever gets ahead of the whole. So I want you to get out a fresh sheet of paper and you're gonna follow along with me. And I'm gonna show you a drawing process that was used by another artist. I want you to follow along and copy what you see, keeping in mind and applying what I tell you along the way. So this drawing sequence um, starts with a single vertical line. This line shows the orientation of the sculpture and corresponds with the central weight line. Okay, Catherine used a plumb line to see where this line would fall. Next, she placed a few major line directions to show the movement of the figure. The lines of perception are felt, but they do not actually exist in the figure. In addition, she visually reinforced the initial central weight line along the base of the cast and the small of the figure's back. So she created that central weight line. That's where the center of weight of the sculpture would be. And then she added in these action lines to kind of direct the movement of the figure. To complete the work, Catherine created a number of smaller angle changes. Notice how these correspond to the larger line directions in the previous image. Those initial governing lines dictate much of the gesture and feeling of this image. So what I want you to do for your assignment is on your own, I want you to identify the action lines and lines that you would use to guide this drawing. Using the same process we just used in the last sketch, create a rough sketch of this figure, okay? So you're gonna find the where the weight, the center of weight is, and you're gonna create that plumb line. You're gonna add in the action lines, right? That help kind of form that shape of that figure. And then you're gonna go in and you're gonna add those details and you're gonna create a nice rough sketch of this figure. Okay, awesome. Have a good day, guys.